Hallelujah. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we just thank God for all that he is going to do. On today, we want you to know that we just love and appreciate everyone that's going to be coming in uh, with us on today. <laughs> Look at the Afro. Yes, it is Afro City here. Uh, but as you're coming in, I want you to like this. I want you to share it. I uh, want you to um, invite some people to come on in. I am just happy to just be able to be, um, you know, in the comfort of my home, but able to be able to deliver this word on today. One of the main things is, is that I'm so very grateful. Um, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to just say that I'm just so very grateful. Um, hey, love, um, for each and every one of you, your prayers, your support, um, those who have given uh, financially um, during this time. I want you to know that it is not unappreciated, it is not overlooked. Um, you know, it has been, um, it has been different <laughs> um, since January 16th on my birthday. But I thank God for my wife, I thank God for Elisha, um, my mom, my dad, my um, mother and father in love. I thank God for each and every one of you. Don't want to keep on calling out names. Definitely Mount Zion. Definitely Embassy. We love you so, so very much. And I am grateful. I am so grateful um, to be here in this moment um, to share this word with you on today. Um, before I get too emotional, I'm just going to uh, move on from that and I just want to just want you right where you are. If you can just type in what I like to type in. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm not going to be able to type in today. I'm going to have to conserve myself the best I can. But as you type in, thank you, Jesus. I just want you, wherever you are, just to lift up your hands for a moment. And we just want to thank the Holy One of Israel. We want to thank our Lord. We want to thank our Savior. We want to thank you for the Him being the architect, the designer, the master planner, even when we don't understand things. Father, we just thank you because we know through every storm, through every trial, through every tribulation, you are going to be right there with us. Father, you know the way that we take. Father, you know that after we've been tried in the fire, that we'll come out as pure gold. So Father, I just bless your name on today. I bless your name, Father, because I know there is a blessing. There is a blessing for all the pain and the trouble and the discomfort. And Father, I stand here on today just saying, Father, as you see fit, use me today to minister life, to minister strength, to minister hope to your people. Father, you are everything to us. Let nothing be missing. Let nothing be broken. Give it to us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, um, again, I want to thank each and every one of you um, for being here today. If I don't see you, I just want to know I love you. Um, and I'm just so grateful. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Isaiah, the 41st chapter. Isaiah, the 41st chapter. I'm going to be reading from the God's Words translation. Um, my wife can attest and maybe um, I may be aggravating her more <laughs> than she has ever aggravated me but God has been just dealing with me um, in dreams and in open visions and he's just been telling me um, and just speaking to me so much but God the other night I was just praying I was frustrated I had some things um, <laughs> just, you know, when I had that setback a few days ago and the fever came back and the chills, I was laying in my bed and my wife was um, trying to keep me on the forward path and I just prayed. I said, God, I need, I said, I just need to see something. I need to see something. I need you to give me something for, for where I am right now. And this is what the Lord uh, brought me to Isaiah, the 41st chapter. Uh, begin reading at verse number one. 
um, through first down through again. I'm reading from the God's words translation. It may read different, but it is all the word of the Lord. The Bible says, "Be silent and listen to me, you coastlands. Let the people gain new strength. Let them come near and speak. Let us come together for judgment." Who has raised up someone from the east, someone to whom the Lord gives victory? With every step he takes, nations are handed over to him. He defeats kings. With his sword, he turns them into dust. With his bow, he turns them into straw, blown by the wind. He chases them. Marching safely on a path his feet has never traveled before. Again, that's Isaiah 41, verse 3. And our topic for today, and if you can just type it with us, I want to talk about you are going to overcome. You are going to overcome. That was in my spirit. That's what, as I'm on this, I'm still on this journey um, dealing with um, the aftermath of um, COVID and um, pneumonia and all of that that is tell God told me to encourage that you are going to overcome you are going to overcome my brothers and sisters I, as I um, just previously stated you know I, I began presenting symptoms of COVID-19 on my 40th birthday on January 16th and about a week or two later I was hospitalized um, due to pneumonia for about six days. Um, I was never fearful of dying, but I was worried about how long will I be in the hospital? How long will I be in this condition? Um, what will life be like after this encounter? Um, I was worried about those whom I know that care for me, those with whom I know love me. I was worried about my wife. I was worried about my child. I was worried about my parents and my parents in love, my brothers and sisters, my grandmother. I was worried about Mount Zion. I was worried about embassy. I, 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 I was worried because I did not understand how I was going to be in the midst of this situation. Uh, it was a feeling that would I have the experience of victory that I have seen so many others experience. It was a question of what was going to be left of me. Uh, am I going to get better and be more powerful? What, what was it? And, and it was to that end that when I had that dream that God brought me, to Isaiah in that first verse he says be silent be silent and listen to me you coastland let the people gain new strength let them come near and speak let us come together for judgment so point number one God says stop with your thoughts that that are antithetical to mine stop with your um, worrying and your fear that is not in alignment trying to create a future or reality that was never meant to us um, to be or for you to experience he told me I got you into this place right now point number one for you to gain new strength somebody type that in for me I, 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 I'm gonna gain new strength and, and and what does that mean he says that that he is gathering the people he says because I don't want you to be looking to the right I don't want you to be looking to the left I don't want you to be um, overwhelmed and concerned about these other things but but I want you to come back Come back to the place in me where you just sat in my presence. Come back to the place in me where you are able to worship and you are able to praise. Come back to the place in me where you enjoyed being in my word. Come back and let me speak to you. Let me let me dive. Um, bulge out of you everything that has taken root in your life that doesn't need to be um, this worry, this anxiety
anxiety, even this sickness, this discouragement. He says, I don't need you to listen to you right now. He says, but I need you to get into this place that you can gain new strength. He says, come together. He says, watch this. Let us come together for judgment. And when we talk about judgment, I'm not talking about hellfire. I'm not talking about brimstone. I'm not talking about something catastrophic happen to your life. But when you come together for judgment, it, it means a correction. It means an alignment. He says, listen, he says, I put you now in this place that as you gain new strength, I am about to cause your life to come into divine alignment. For what good is it for you to have new possibilities if your life isn't aligned? And I want to speak to somebody today who has been feeling like um, they're not making much progress, it's not with their school and not with um, their business and not with um, their personal goals and dreams and whatever it may be. It could be in your marriage. It could be in other familiar relationships. It could be in other types of relationships. But God says, I need someone who will just come to me. He says, and I will correct. I will properly align what needs to be aligned in your life. I'm going to give you new strength. You're not going to have to rely on the old. You're not going to have to rely on yesterday. You're not going to have to rely on the things uh, that got you to this point because I, as you sup with me, I'm giving you new words. He says, listen to me. The coastlands or the lands or the people of us who have assembled together today. God says, I don't want you looking to anybody else, but look to me on today. He says, watch this. You are gaining new strength. Whatever disruption that you are facing. See, COVID was a disruption for me. Pneumonia was a disruption for me. But God says you are gaining new strength in the midst of this situation, in the midst of this trial, in the midst of these circumstances, I want to encourage you that whatever you want, whatever seems like is breaking down in your life, whatever seems like is just going away in your life. He says this disruption was not to beat you down. This disruption was not to cause you to say that something was wrong in your life, but disruption was simply God speaking to your situation and telling you that you are meant to, meant to stand. You are meant to go to that place. You are meant to live vigorously. You are meant to do things that are greater than what your wildest dreams were yesterday. But you're going to have to embrace the disruption, not view it as a curse and not view it as a negative and not view it as something that is wrong. But you have to view what God is telling you you in this season of your life that I am gaining new strength. Can somebody just type that in? Go for me again. I'm gaining new strength. I'm gaining new strength. I'm gaining new strength. And what, what God began to show me in, in Isaiah, you know, who was the eagle eye prophet, the one who prophesied more about Jesus um, than anybody else in the Old Testament. And, and he began to show me, he says, look in verse number two. He says, if I your savior there. I said, I said, Lord, what, what do you say? He says, I want you to see your savior because I need you to know that it's still true, not by might. It's still true, not by power, but by my spirit. It's still true that it's nevertheless not I that live it, but Christ that lives on the inside of me. He says, look at verse number two, who has raised up from the east someone to whom the Lord gives victory with every step he takes. Doesn't that sound like your savior? He says, nations are handed over to him. He defeats kings. Why? Because he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. With, with his sword, he turns them into dust. With his bow, he turns them into straw blown by the wind. Point number two, God told to tell you, what is found in Jesus is found in you. What is found in Jesus is what is found in you. Somebody just typed that in. What is found in Jesus is found in you. Why? Because whatever he is, that's what I ascertain to be, that I would be like him. That's why the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I 
follow Christ. He says, because I want you to understand that when God raised him up, when he gave him victory with every step, guess what? You have victory with every step you take. Well, well, prophet, what are you saying? Look at prophet. You said you had a step back. Yes, I had a setback, but my victory wasn't given up. I had a step back, but my victory did not leave me because I had a setback. Why? Because even when I stepped backwards, I had victories in the backward step. I want somebody to understand that right now, that we cannot always look at things in, in black and in, 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 in this white, but you've got to understand that you are a child of God. You are a co-heir with Christ, and because of that, whatever is found in him, he says, watch this nations and kingdoms. He defeats kings. In other words, he said, anything that has been set up with opposition to the plan and to the purpose of God. He says, I've already settled this matter for you. Look at those people. It could be it could be supervisors on your job. It can be co-workers. It could be classmates. Whom it could be anybody. It could be witches and warlocks that have ill intent and, and trying to speak curses over your life. But God tells me, watch this, because with his sword, what is this? The sword of the spirit. What is the source spirit? The word of God. He says, with his word, he turns them into dust. In other words, he says, my word comes and anything that is trying to come against you, it's going to go back to the original nature that it was. And I'm here to speak prophet to somebody right now that God is saying as you continue in this word. That's why he said in verse number one, be silent. Listen to me. Listen to my words. Listen to what I have placed in your heart. We've listened to too many people. We've listened um, to ourselves. We've listened um, to people that's external to us. But he says, when you get my word, he says, the things that are going to come against you are going to turn into dust. The things that are not meant for you, he says, I'm going to break it down right before your eyes. And I want you to know, he says, watch this, with this bow, he turns them into straw blown away. In other words, the victory that you have is the victory of knowing that your enemy will be in one form when they start the fight but when God begins to move through you, they will not be in the same form. That's why I believe says the enemy you see today, you will see no more. Why? Because what is found in Jesus is found in me. What, 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 whatever it is, it is that that they tried to kill him, but he was able to walk through the crowd. They they lied on him and they did those things, but he was able to fulfill his purpose. Why? Because he had victory with every step he took every step he made. And that's what I want for you today. I want you to understand right now. That's why the devil wants some of us in the holding pattern. That's why he wants us in a, in a scared place. But but you need to know today, no, 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 no. I've got somewhere to do. i got somewhere to go. i got things to accomplish for my God. i got to make some steps. I just want you symbolically right now just to take a step. And I want you to understand that was victory in that step. I need you to get up out of that place of, of, of of loneliness and bitterness and anger and confusion. And I need you to take another step. Why? Because there's victory in that step. Well, there's victory in that step. Yo, you don't understand. You are in school and you trying to say, oh, how I'm going to survive, baby. Open that book and crack and read and, and pray and get you a tutor. Why? Because every time you do not allow the frustration of the classroom to break you down, there's victory in every step that you take. That's why I believe that 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 in my day when I, I'm you know whatever I wasn't very good at math and and, and I understand um, the, the, the process of showing your work because um, many times I knew the process, uh, I knew the steps, but but I would make an error here, which will cause me to get the wrong answer. But my teacher was able to immediately identify um, the deficiency in what I did to when I got to the place of having to take a midterm or a final, I was able to do it. Why? 
because she saw the steps that I took and she lets me know where I made the mistake. So when I do and take the step again, there is victory right there. I want somebody to understand me right there. See, there's victory in your steps. Show your work. Oh, it doesn't always look good. That's fine. But show it. Why? Because every step that you take, there is victory in it. But but not only that, because I got to pace myself, y'all. My wife uh, told me I had, to, I had to talk this thing out. Am I talking it um, good, babe? <clears throat> Right now, in verse number three, Isaiah 41, verse number three, the God's word translation. And, and this is what blessed me because this is the pathway in which I am living right now. He says he chases them. Watch this. Marching by safely on a path his feet has never traveled before. I want to do point number three. I want you, somebody to type this. So you are protected in unknown places. You are protected in unknown places. You are protected in unknown places. And, and, and I, I, I want you to understand that. Why? Because you have to know that I'm protected in unknown places. That places I have not been. Things I have not encountered. Things I don't understand. But I have to know that I'm protected there. Oh, right now, y'all, let me tell you, I haven't worked. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But yet, I'm protected in a place I don't even recognize. I know the hand of God is upon me. I haven't been able to go to church. I can't go around people right now. It's an unknown place for me, but I am protected. And that's what God is trying to get you to. You're saying, Lord, I don't know what's in the land. He says, it doesn't matter what's in the land. He says, He says, as you walk with your Lord and your Savior, he says, you're marching safely on a path that your feet have never traveled for. In other words, all I need you to go. Go into that promised land. Go into that land of unknowns, which will be your land of blessings. Go into that place of unknown that you are going to walk in victory. You're going to experience the glory of the Lord. Whatever you're doing, you've got to know, watch this, that I'm protected in unknown places. Come on, somebody, just lay hands on yourself. Say, I'm protected. I'm protected. I am protected um, in unknown places. See, 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 point number one, I said, uh, the disruption, you are going to get new strength. Uh, point number two, we said what is found in Jesus uh, is found in you. Point number three, you are protected in unknown places. Uh, and God began to speak to me even on last night as I was laying in the bed and God began to tell me, and I'm going to give it to you just like um, he gave it to me. And I want you to hear me say, he told me, say, where you are and whatever you are going through, God has a preset plan for your life. God has something that he will use for you to be who he needs you to be. He has a situation. He has a circumstance. He hospitalized me. He said, but I will use it. I will use it. I will use it to get you to, to allow me to give you dreams. I, I, I will use it to get you to allow me to give you visions. I will use it to get your attention to say that you've got to move and you've got to do what is going to be necessary for your life. He says, I will use it. He says, I will lay, not on my back. I, I'll lay you on your side. <laughs> I'll lay you on your stomach. I, 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 I will let pneumonia get in your right lung, but it won't be to kill you, but I will use whatever I choose to use to get your attention for you to embrace what I have called you to be and for you to go into the place that I need you to go. He said, I, I uh, oh, uh, yes, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I'm pacing myself, babe. I'm getting it back. I'm getting back. I'm getting back. I'm going to slow it down. Um, I'm, I'm going to slow it down. Watch this. I told you earlier that I was worried about some things, but what was really happening? I told you um, that I was never fearful of dying, but I was worried about how long I was going to be in this hospital. I was worried about my wife and child. I was worried about my parents and my parents in love and my brothers and sisters and, and, and my grandmother. I was worried about um, Mount Zion. I, I was worried about embassy. But after having, as the old folks used to say, a little talk 
walk with Jesus uh, and tell him all about my troubles uh, and my concerns and worries. Uh, I know I heard the Lord say, come on up just a little high. He said, do you remember that I am the author and the finisher of your faith? I, I said, yes, sir, I know. He said, he said, well, if I am the author and the finisher of your faith, I told you that you would overcome. I said, yes, sir, you did. He said, let me be the author of your story and let me edit some things so you can experience the finishing power that I have. Did y'all catch that? He says, if I'm going to be the author of your story, you've got to be willing to let me edit some things so you can get to the place of my finishing power. I'm going to say that one more time. That just blessed me real good. He says, if I am the author of your story, you're going to have to let me edit some things so you can get to that place of knowing my finishing power. I said, yes, sir. I said, go ahead and edit my story, Jesus, so I can see what you see and I can know what you know. How many people, that's what you want? Say, Lord, let me see what you see. Let me know what you know. Let me experience what you want me to experience. He says, well, he says, you said those things that you were worried about. He says, I want you to begin to revise it and I want you to say it like this. I said, Lord, what you want me to say? He said, say it like this. I was never fearful of dying because I was gaining new strength in the hospital. I, I was gaining new strength for my wife and child. I was gaining new strength for my family. I was gaining new strength for um, Mount Zion. I was gaining new strength for um, Embassy of Judah. He, he says, it wasn't worry that was there. He said, it was new strength that was being birthed in your life because you are going to overcome. Can somebody say it right now? That God is editing your story. He's editing the things that are going on in your life for, for you to know who I am. And that is why he is the divine architect of our life. That is why he is and he is alone. The Alpha and the Omega. The, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. And and, 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 and this ain't Bible, but this is the Charles Edward Bronfield Jr. translation of this text. So he is the great editor of our life. Somebody write that for me in the context. My father is the great editor editor of my life. And the great editor in my life says you are gaining new strength. I don't have time to call out everything that you are going through, but I bless God just like me that you know that you've got some new strength. You've got some new power because what Jesus has done passes down to me. His victory is my victory. His power is my power. And guess what? I'm still taking medicine because I got to. I, I still have to monitor my breath because I have to. I, I still have to do those things. But can I tell somebody, I feel my help coming. I'm not going to preach bad. I just got one more paragraph. But I want to tell somebody right now, and I want you to agree with me. And I just want you to type in, I am okay. I am all right. He told me, I can't have you worried about tomorrow because I need you to know that I am protected in unknown places. You are protected in unknown situations. Wherever you go, God told me to tell you, I have angels on assignment saying, son and daughter, don't fret over the issues of your day because you shall overcome. You shall overcome. You shall overcome. I am okay and I am all right. You shall overcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, if you have any prayer requests, I want you to type it in right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, as you're doing that, um, I want you right now. I need you to do two things for me. Um, Mount Zion, if it's your service of tithe, I need you to give your cash out. 
Mount Zion Pilgrim, PayPal, Pastor C B J R at Gmail. If you use Give the Fly, you can search Mount Zion Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church. Make sure you're in Covington, Louisiana. If you um, need to pick up, I saw you earlier, D. God bless you. They can fill up washing will make arrangements to receive your gifts. But listen, I need you. I need you to, to support the ministry on today. And after you support the ministry on today, I want to encourage you to sow a love seed into your pastor, into your prophet. You can do it via Cash App, via Pastor Attorney B. You can use PayPal, email address profit at cbjr.org, or you can use Venmo at Pastor Attorney B. But I want you to do those things today. I don't say these things lightly. I haven't worked in a month. I, I tried to go back to work and had a setback, but God is yet faithful. God is yet faithful, and I'm believing God for you on today. I'm believing God for the very best for you. Because God told me you're going to overcome. He told me I was going to overcome. And I know you are meant to overcome too. God is going to do it for you. God is going to work it for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we do our closing flowers, I just want you to type in hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, I thank you right now. For everyone who shall watch this, who's watching live or via replay, I thank you for your hand. I thank you for your hand that is upon our life. Father, I ask you right now for us to walk in the places that we need to walk, for us to go in the places that we need to go. Father, I thank you that the disruption was for us to gain new strength, I thank you, God, that whatever is found in Jesus is found in us. And Father, I thank you that we are protected in the unknown places of our life. Father, we surrender for you and you alone. And we just thank you for it right now. Before I go, I just want to offer Jesus to you. You need to know him today. If you do not know him today, just repeat this prayer after me. He says, Lord, I realize that I am a sinner. I realize that I have fallen short of your glory. But Father, I thank you for the sacrifice of your son who died on the cross for me, who was buried, who stayed there for three days and got up with all power in his hand. He returned to you. And one day he will return to receive us unto himself. I thank you for it right now. I am saved. I am saved. I thank you for it. I speak life to you. I speak strength to you. And until we meet again, know that you are going to overcome. Love you. God bless you. See you soon. Peace.